Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to download ISO files using Download Station on a Synology NAS. So I'll be downloading some Linux ISO files, but you could use this for other large files, but I'm kind of focusing towards this because this is an instance where someone might want to use Download Station. So I'm on a Mac right now, but I'll also switch over to Windows 10 and show you how to do it on that system too. So I'm logged into my Synology NAS. I'll go to the Package Center, and then you want to search just for download should bring it up and we have download station and you want to install that you'll have the install here I've already installed it so I'll just hit open and I'll close the package center so we have the download station up so we need to feed this a URL to download the ISO file so if we go to this little icon menu here we have a plus and a little earth with a plus and you can click on either one of these this will give you either the open a file option or the enter URL option. So plus is open a file, the earth is enter URL. So I'll click on enter URL and then you need to enter in a destination. So if I hit select here, it'll bring up all my shares. So I clicked on my DS share, I'll expand that. And then I have one called ISOs and I'll select it. So that's where it will download the files to. So now I'll get over to the Raspberry Pi website here and I'll click on downloads. And this is where I want to get my file I want to download. And this has the ISO I want to download. So I'll scroll down on the page till I get to Raspberry Pi OS. I'll click on that. I'll scroll down a little more. And we have the three different system types here. And you'll see it has a link here for download torrent or download zip. So you can use that upload a file and download the torrent. So what you do is you would click on download torrent. It will download a torrent file to your computer. And that's a small file. And you would upload that on download station using this open a file feature. You'd hit open file, browse, and choose it. The thing about using a torrent is you would typically need to configure your firewall to allow people to access your system to download from you also. So that's a little bit more of an advanced feature. So for now, I want to do download zip. Now, if I hover over this, if you look at the bottom of my browser screen, you'll see a URL down there. And at the end, it says uh, rasp iOS full arm HF underscore latest. So this is a link to the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS. So what that means is this is going to do a redirect to the latest version. So if I copy this URL, if I right click on this, and say copy link, it will copy this link here. So if I go in here and paste that in, I can do that. And you can try this. I wouldn't try it with Raspberry Pi, but with other systems, you could try this and it may be able to resolve it, but a lot of times it can't resolve it. So you won't see any progress if you do this. So I'll go back here and the way to find the correct URL on a Mac is I'll just click this, I'll say allow, and I'll go up to my download here and I'll stop it immediately. I'll hit the little magnifying glass. That'll take me to the finder. And now I can right click on this and go to get info. And you'll see here it says where from, and I'll just select this. I'll right click and I'll say copy. Then I'll go back to the download station and I'll paste this URL in. Okay, so I have my destination filled out. I have the URL filled out. I'll leave these two other things unchecked and I'll hit okay. So we should see this start downloading in just a minute here. So I'm going to switch over to Windows and I'll show you how to get the URL on Windows. Okay, so I'm on Windows 10 and I have the brand new Edge browser on here. So I can click on Downloads on the Raspberry Pi website. I'll scroll down, I'll click on Raspberry Pi OS, scroll down and I'll click on Download Zip. And you'll see it come up here on the bottom. I'll hit these three dots and I'll pause it. I'll click this again and I'll say copy download link. I'll open up a new tab and I'll paste that in here so you can see it. So this has the full link here. So you could paste that into download station and it should start downloading. And now I can just cancel this and ultimately delete it. So I'll head back over to the Mac. Okay, so I'll hit this little broom here. This will clean up the ones that are done. And this is downloading right now. You can see it says the file size is 2.47 gigabytes and the download is 37.78 megabytes. So it's not downloading very fast. We can see the rate here, it's downloading at about one megabyte per second. So let's click over to the Ubuntu website here and you'll see this on lots of different things where we can click on download and I'll click on version 20.04 LTS and I'll have some links here to download this. Okay, and it started. So let me stop this and I can do the same thing here. I can open up the preferences and I can get the download link. On a lot of these, you can look around for alternate downloads. So let me go back a page. So different distributions of Linux are gonna have different ways to get to this, but I see down here it says other ways to download. So let me click on, let's try this older releases. 
So that opened up releases.ubuntu.com. It says these are the releases of Ubuntu that are available. So I'll click on this. And here are a couple links. It says desktop image. So if I hover over this, you see at the bottom it ends in ISO. So that means you could use this to download from download station. You could copy and paste that in there. And here's a list here. So there are all sorts of versions. Uh, here's one. You can right click on that and just say copy link. And this will work the same on Windows too. Of course, let's see. These are the desktop version. Okay, so down here is also a directory. So you can find all the older versions here too if you want to go to 1804. You can find those here. So the nice thing about Download Station is if I download these to my computer, I'm just going to copy them over to the server eventually anyway. And if I put them on my computer, my computer is going to back up and it's going to try and back up these huge files. And I don't really need to back these files up. If I ever lose them someday, I can re-download them. So by using Download Station, it offloads the downloading to the Synology NAS. And I can set these to download. And after this video, I'm going to add on the other two versions of Raspberry Pi OS. And then they'll sit on my Synology NAS ready for me to use. And they won't go into my downloads folder. And it also won't tie up my computer. I can shut my computer down completely because the Synology NAS is still going to be up downloading these files. So this is a really handy feature of the Synology NAS for people who want to download ISOs. It can be used for other things too, obviously. But that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.